Hello, and welcome to the San Jose State University iSchools LIS Careers Podcast. My name is Kim Doherty, and I am really, really delighted to welcome Julie Sherwood to our podcast series. Julie has a job that I believe is part of a very interesting trend among public libraries. She's the Partnership and Community Engagement Manager for the Wichita Public Library. She's agreed to talk to us today about her role in the library, the types of activities involved in the work that she does, and other aspects of her job. And, and I'm also going to rope her into telling us about how she started out in the LIS world and then ended up where she is now. So with that, I'd like to welcome Julie on behalf of the San Jose State University iSchool students. Thank you. All right, Julie. Um, so I have, I have a million questions I'd like to ask Julie because what she's doing is so fascinating. But we're going to be respectful of her time and, and try to keep this within, um, within a reasonable amount of Julie's work, workspace here. So I'm going to begin by asking you, Julie, about the specifics of your job. So could you tell us about what a partnership and community engagement manager does within a public library? This is a somewhat um, unusual title, so it would be great if you could describe your role for us. Okay. Um, I began as a partnership and community engagement librarian about a year and a half ago. And it was in recognition of the fact that there's a lot of common goals that we have with other agencies in the community. And by working together on those common goals, we can gain a greater um, synthesis between us and uh, really meet community needs. Um, basically, what we do is to try to find connections in the community. Uh, we look for what we have in common, similar goals and outcomes. We create formal partnerships with them. The partnerships might include things like uh, them doing um, a STEM program for us or doing some kind of ongoing um, uh, community program for social issues. And then in return, the library becomes a place where they can hold meetings or um, uh, offer other uh, benefits to, <clears throat> excuse me, to their organization uh, that the library is able to offer. Um, the, each partnership is unique in the way that it comes out, and um, it gives us greater access to a whole network of people that we may not already be connected to. Uh, the community engagement side of what I do has to do with um, understanding the community that we live in and what exists in that community and how it functions and making sure that we're listening to the community for what it is they want from the library. So we work with um, the staff on helping them as they plan programs to um, to look for what our goals are and make sure that those are in sync with what the community is asking for and helping them to find ways of getting that data, whether it's through surveys or looking at what people are checking out, um, keeping abreast of what's going on in local news, um, what trends there are in our community, and then figuring out what our community is looking for in the way of programs. And programs are just one way of addressing service needs in a library. There's a whole array of things you can do, whether it's um, displays or promotions or um, just information and uh, teaching of all kinds. So we look for how we can um, meet our goals in making a better community through community engagement. Okay, and so going back to partnerships, uh, uh, two questions, or one question and one comment. So one of the things that these community partnerships enable you to do is to bring in essentially subject man man 
subject matter experts from these organizations so that you guys don't have to become the SMEs yourself. That's right. Okay. And then my question is, how do you identify um, who you want to partner with? It's actually, sometimes it happens in all different ways. Sometimes they come to us with an idea and we look for where the win-win would be in that partnership. Sometimes we're actually um, seeking out a partner to fulfill a particular direction that we want to go. So, for example, uh, the Wichita Amateur Radio Club came to us with the idea that they would like to do monthly programs and work to get that, that kind of technology and experience out into the community. And they had a whole array of interesting programs on anything from storm spotting to Amelia Earhart and how radios were used in that. And they've done some introductory workshops. And that's turned out to be a really great partnership. We had nine people that came to a, a session in September on how to get their actual license. And so now they're going to offer a class for us. We also had the um, American Society of Civil Engineers. It started with them looking for a place to have their monthly meetings, but they came up with the idea of what if on a Saturday morning they would do a STEM program for children. Oh. Um, they, and they've done programming such as how to make a better sandcastle <laughs> and uh, how, to, how a water plane works. One had to do with packaging a s'mores to keep from crushing what was inside. Oh. And they are really well attended and the kids love them. And in exchange, they hold their meetings here at the library. And now that they're going to have a conference coming up, it looks like we will be the site for their conference. And it puts oh those people in contact with our library, some of whom might not have been in a library in a while. And we think that their expertise uh, gives us a greater stretch and reach mm -hmm. into the community. Certainly expands your ability to offer services that you couldn't otherwise offer. Um, right, and exactly. So going back to the radio group then, the fact that they reached out to you with this proposal would indicate that either through your own, through the library's own marketing or word of mouth, organizations in the community are recognizing that you want to partner. Is that yes. something that you're actively working to, to get yes. out a message? And sometimes we actually go out and seek them. And I mentioned that, um, I, I didn't mention that we uh, have a, a local group called the Health and Wellness Coalition. And I go to those monthly meetings and we were looking to get uh, a grant um, going. And so what we did was we talked to them about the grant and were asking for um, interested partners to come and talk to us. And so we got a couple of um, interested um, agencies that contacted us, and then we were able to, um, we're still in the process of writing that grant, but we're working on a proposal together with that, um, with our community partners. So sometimes cool. we'll say, okay, what we're looking for is um, something on, um, on, this topic, whether it's a grant that comes to us and, or an opportunity like the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage is coming up next year. And so the League of Women Voters was a natural partner for that. Oh, right. uh, we, had, um, we have been doing some uh, programming in the past on race and ethnicity. And so we're working with um, quite a number of different nonprofits who are active in that area to help us develop our programming for a new grant that we're writing on that. And are, is that like an IMLS grant? Or uh, a, no, a uh, this was of a, um, it, there was a National Endowment for the Humanities grant ah. opportunity a couple of years ago. And because of some things that were happening in our community, the State Humanities um, Council co contacted us and asked Wichita to be the one to develop the grant. And I got partners to the table 
and we had some really dynamic programming. We've um, we've just recently won a Voice of the People Award for our city for what we're doing in terms wow. of race and um, ethnicity programs and, and um, initiatives. So. It's been very successful. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's <laughs> We're really, proud really of that. an accomplishment. That's wonderful. Yeah. And then how does your current role differ from the previous role you held as program and outreach manager? The um, program and outreach manager job that I had before, uh, there's a lot of similar elements to it, but it kind of started with um, – the role of reference in our system. Uh, reference uh, has kind of gone, undergone a change over the years. And what we wanted to do was to emphasize the fact that there's more than one way to get information to people and programming is one of those ways. So we moved into a new building last year in June and in preparation for that we kind of reorganized and we were looking at the jobs that were being done by that reference team and we wanted to really emphasize their role in creating programming. Hmm. And as that happened, that department became more involved in the day-to-day -day planning of programming and I sort of became in the community engagement side of what I do. Um, looking at what they're planning and making sure it's aligning with our goals and guiding them in the creation of programs okay. for our library system. So then this lets me segue into the question I'm really excited about here among all of the other ones I am as well. Um, but that is, could you tell the students how your career has developed to bring you to where you are now? Sure. Uh, when I got started in uh, library field back in the late 80s, my plan was to be a children's librarian. And I started off in the San Antonio library system as a floater librarian because I wasn't quite sure that I was actually ready to take on the job of a children's librarian. But after about a year and a half, I uh, changed jobs. I went to Tracy, California. and. In the Stockton San Joaquin County system, I was the children's librarian at the Tracy Branch Library for three years. When I was done working at that location, I was looking to move up uh, to a higher uh, position. And so there was a job in Salina, Kansas for the head of a children's department at um, their um, community library. So I moved back to Kansas into, uh, went to Salina as the, and I stayed in that position about four and a half years. Um, there came a position in Wichita for a youth services coordinator and Wichita is my hometown. I'd been wanting to get back there for a long time. So I applied for that position and got that position in uh, September of 97. And about three years later, uh, our director retired and we had a new director come in who wanted to reorganize the library. And rather than divide things between adult services and children's services, the new plan was to divide things between programs and collections. And my job was going to be programs and someone else was doing the collections. And at that point, I knew how the children's programs worked, but I really had no clue about how adult programming was done. I had not really been involved in that side of things and began uh, a process of learning by trial and error how to be an adult services programming librarian. and. Over the years, that's what I have been doing for the last 20 years. And then, as I said last year, we reorganized again. And this, I am now the Partnership and Community Engagement Manager. So it's kind of been a long transition of where I am now from where I thought I was going to be when I started. <laughs> And when, but, it's, but it's a great position. I mean, I, I really do enjoy the programming side of it. It's very dynamic, and it certainly um, gives me a lot of chance to be creative. So, and, and that then leads to my next question is, what do you enjoy the most about your job? 
Well, I definitely enjoy the creativity and the variety. Okay. Um, I like developing an idea and I like the out of the box thinking that I get to do. And I'm a very curious kind of person and have interest in a lot of things. And so this gives me the chance to, um, to do uh, uh, so many different things and what I what I don't like is to get bogged down in the details. So what I'm able to do is to create something and then bring someone in to actually carry out what I got started. And that's really fun for me. Then I get to move on to something else. That, so um, you're kind of, you, that's a mindset that's like a project person. You yes. create the spark, you create, you know, you flesh out, this is what it, it should look like and do an address. And then you're ready to move on to the next opportunity. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, I also like the connections that I get with people throughout the community. Um, in a job like this, uh, much as I love the books and the collections, it's really about, in this job, it's about meeting people, listening to people, it's about working collaboratively with people. And I just really like getting to know people out in the community. And it's, it's almost as if you are, in many ways, the public face of yes, the, exactly. the library in the community. So Yes, and, and I go to so many of the programs. I actually had someone say to me recently, do you live at the library or you're <laughs> always here? <laughs> and it's just coincidental that I'm frequently here when there's a program and that's when they're here. So it may seem like I'm always here. But, but how wonderful then to see that realization of the idea yeah. that you had come to fruition. That would be so fun and so rewarding. So yeah. an, another question would be, from your vantage point and, and from your um, connections in the profession and with other uh, librarians in other communities and other public libraries, are you seeing an increase in these types of community collaborations around the public library sort of universe or is Wichita fairly unique in what they're doing there? No, I am beginning to see more of this in other places. When I first got this title, um, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I would be the only one, but I have seen occasionally other people that are having um, similar um, titles or similar job duties to what I'm doing, and I do see it as a trend. There was, um, there has always been um, sort of the. Uh, an expectation of what the library is, but my experience is that that's changing every every year and right. even every month. You know, there's something new, something different, and I think that the whole concept of a library is changing. And one of the ways of that that's happening is that the the collaborations and the way that we interact with the community. Um, there's so much now that's happening with data collection, surveys, and it's not just in libraries in that way. I mean, every time we go shopping somewhere, there's a receipt that wants you to respond back to them because people do want to know who are the people we're serving and what is it that they're looking for from us. And the closer you can come to um, matching what their expectations are, um, the better you'll be at um, at what you're doing. So, I do think that one of the the keys to be able to to be able to serve the community best is to find out who is your community and what is it that they are doing and interested in and that they want from the library. And partnering with other agencies, these are formed for a purpose and they are fulfilling a need and if we can help them and they can help us, then it's a win-win for everybody. It, it really multiplies to such a, a wonderful degree the impact that both organizations can have in terms of right. uh, having a positive outcome in people's lives. So right. a question then based on that We've got students who are going through grad school. They're looking at, you know, what is, 
what is the field going to look like as I continue to grow professionally in this field? For someone who would be interested in doing the kind of work that you're doing, what skills do you feel are the most important ones to be successful in the work that you do? Um, I would say f that, that one of them is to be able to manage lots of different things at one time. Um, point. Basically, there's a whole lot to project management. That, so the more you know about how to meet deadlines, how to keep things in budget, how to um, keep your team on track and not get off into the weeds. Um, I think those are helpful skills. Um, certainly um, communication is really, really a key and making sure that everyone uh, is talking to each other and stays in the loop. Um, being able to be um, a positive encourager of other people. Uh, sometimes when we're working on a project like the Big Read and we invite other community agencies to be a part of our project, sometimes they come up with things that they wouldn't have been what we would, <laughs> would have done. <laughs> but, but as a partner, you say, okay, we're going to let you run with that and we're going <laughs> to stay in our lane here and we're going to do doing this, this part. Here. <laughs> That's right. And you really, um, get a better uh, outcome, I think, when you accept your partners for who they are and let them uh, do their best. And communicating your vision for the whole, the whole thing is really um, important. Um, I also think that even though I think I'm a big picture thinker, that being able to manage details, it's, it's me working left-handed on the detailed side of it, but that's really, <laughs> really a critical thing. There are so many elements to any program that you do, the date, the place, the length of time, the description that you're using, and the contracting and the, the managing of things. And so all of those details are really important. And so clerical accuracy and, and communication is really uh, important. Um, and I think that just being able to create things and to be able to um, to look at a situation or something that you think people are interested in and, and just have curiosity about things. I think that's going to help a lot in programming. Um, sometimes there's things that I become interested in, not because I, I wanted it, but because I can see other people be doing that and I'm just curious about what it is. Mm. Um, I think sometimes that I've seen problems where people want to create programs that satisfy what they themselves want, but it really doesn't resonate with Interesting. others in the community. And basically, I think that that does a disservice to the community in, um, um, in our programming. And just taking something that you've seen that looks really cool in one place, it doesn't mean you can cut it out and press it into a mold in your community that someone else may be doing that work already and no reason to duplicate or compete with them. So being able to understand well enough what, what's already existing where you are and what, what new things you can add that would be beneficial. So um, how, how can you that compliment? Analytical, that analytical oh, good side point. of it. Good point. I, I think that's a really important point about complimenting rather than competing with. Because yeah. when you can complement what someone else is already doing or extend the reach of it or the breadth and depth of it or the library resources available to enhance it, that, that gets to your point about really responding to the community. Um, it, it is having, I've, I've worked for a number of uh, founder-led startups and that issue of, I think this is a really cool idea, so everyone is going to love it, um, <laughs> is, is really exactly. easy to fall into, <laughs> let's put it that way. That's but, right, exactly. you know, that's, that's also one of the benefits of listening and of asking people and of doing surveys and those sorts of things is 
that if you ask those questions and probe a little bit more deeply, they will tell you, well, yeah, that's kind of a neat idea, but that's not really what we need. What we really <laughs> right. need is this thing over here. Um, so exactly. I, you know, I think that's a really, really good point that you've made there. So to wrap us up, I'm going to ask you what advice you would give to students who might be interested in this career path, since it sounds to me like people don't sort of say, I'm going to have a career as a program uh, or a partnership and community engagement manager. Um, it sounds like you, you find your way to this right. kind of a role through a number of different pathways and channels. So if that's the case, what advice would you share with students about this kind of a role and how to, how to get there? Um, I think that one of the important things is getting experience in actual team teamwork, uh, whether it's on the job experience or outside of the job experience. If you're a part of a team, actually look at how the team functions and what your role is on that team. and see what works and what doesn't and the more practice you get at doing that I think the better it's the easier it's going to become to uh, think of what options you might have in um, doing programming I think that a wide variety of things of whether it's um, work, a wide variety of work experience or life experience or even positions within a library. As I mentioned, I was a, a floater, a children's librarian, a manager, and I think all of those things helped me develop the skills that I needed to be able to do this job. So building all of the different strengths that, that it takes to do this kind of job uh, happens a little bit at a time. And so um, I also think that being open-minded to uh, different ways of doing things um, is beneficial. Um, trying to, um, I also think keeping up with the literature as far as what's going on. There's a uh, ALA um, weekly thing, or it's actually I don't, maybe every other week. It's called Programming Librarian, ah. and it kind of helps if you subscribe to the programming librarian uh, resource you can kind of see what other people are doing in programs there's also um, the national endowment for the arts the national endowment for the humanities and then a lot of other organizations in the nonprofit world keeping up with what's happening in your community through the news the local news um, for example, this coming year in Wichita, we've got um, a new stadium that's being built, and we're also celebrating the 150th anniversary of our city. So one of the projects that some of our staff are working on right now is um, involves the history of um, baseball in Wichita, uh -huh. and it kind of connects to uh, Satchel Page played one of his earliest games in Wichita, so it kind of connects to our Candid Conversations programming on race and ethnicity. Oh and gosh. so we kind of want to loop all of those things together and uh, create, um, we're looking at doing a drama called uh, Mr. Ricky Calls a Meeting. And, As a um, branch, Ricky? Yes, yes, about uh, Jackie <laughs> Robinson, and yeah, we're 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 just looking at at all of the different ways to celebrate. And so I think that that when you're part of a team and you're brainstorming, that that is developing that um, that functionality of being able to develop ideas. Um, so it's thinking very I'm, broadly, really beyond the library itself, exactly. into the whole community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and if I were to place this in a, a sort of category of LIS work, I was thinking marketing, but you're saying programming. Yes, and actually we have a person that I work very closely with. Our communications manager 
works really side by side with me on all okay. of this. Um, his name is Sean Jones, and he, I'm the one who's working with the staff on create getting the programs um, described and created, and they're helping to find you know the partners to do. I mean the um, speakers to do the programs, and and I'm working on like larger initiatives like. Big read and candid conversations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we give that to Sean, and then Sean takes that and creates the actual print pieces. He does the social media, okay. and um, he is doing the marketing and promotion of what we're creating. Okay, and clearly he's doing a good job of it. Oh, um, he's doing an excellent job. Yep, he's he's really fabulous. And basically, um, I think that in other libraries, they work it a little differently. Some of them have graphic designers, and um, sometimes the person who does what he does has some elements of what I do. So it's, it can be a little bit different uh, depending on how you choose to allocate those roles. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but this one, I, like I said, I think I have found a really good, happy place for me. <laughs> and, and to all the students, um, I, I would point out on behalf of both myself and Julie, we've been doing this for a long time. We've been in the LIS field, and throughout that time, our jobs have changed a lot. And, yeah. and we work with different organizations, and one of the cool things about the profession is that the more often you take on a new role, as Julie has done over and over again, the closer you're likely to get to exactly where Julie is now, which is her happy place, her sweet spot. Right. And, <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, I just think that's terrific. Well, Julie, thank you so much for sharing your, your time and your expertise with us. And I look forward to um, talking to you again. This has been really wonderful. And beha on behalf of all of the students, thank you so much for thank sharing. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, take care. All right, you too, bye-bye.